With With the Winds Peak high above the foreground, take a little slide down into the playoffs round of eight. Your final hopes pray at Auto Club Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here to PTM Racing TV Live at Auto Club Speedway here in Fontana, California. And we're about to see the GOAT Racing League Truck Series and their last ditch effort and attempt to enter the round of four here on this high banked, tough terrain, two mile long embankment of Auto Club Speedway. It's going to be a fight out, to say the least, here on the show. Hey yeah, everyone, I am the Crusader Christian Trial. Join you guys here today as we're getting ready to grid up and order up. I think it's about time we get down to business to show you a look at our line, starting lineup. On the pole today in the number 12, it'll be Aaron Action Jackson. And on the outside of him, already in the round of four, that's Aaron, the gold standard Smith. And row number two, Justin Reynolds will pilot 94. The outside of him in the 23, it is Charles Van Schaik. Row number three is going to be Samuel Harrell in the 43. With the outside in the five, Nathan Bogart. Row number four is going to be Ricky Utting in the two. The outside of him in the number 18, it is Philip Schmitz. Row number five is Dakota Kramer in the 42. The outside of him in the 36, it is Richard Crane. Row number six is the 93 of Bud Shear. The outside of them in the number 31, it is David Scott. Row number seven pilots the 89 of Russell on away. The outside him in the 24. It is Cody Sturgill. Row number eight is Brandon Burkhardt in the 83. Outside him in the 98. Christoph Hall, the 17 of Jeff Ramsdale. Shotgun on the field. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. With last week's feature win, Aaron Smith has already punched his ticket to the final round. He will go with four other drivers. But who will that become? We'll take a look at it as we go along with this race. But first things first, let's take a look at our stage breaks today. 
Stage one will be on lap 12, stage two will be on lap 30, and then for the final 30 laps, it's all or nothing for these drivers. 60 laps to the distance here at Auto Coast Speedway for the Truck Series. No gimmies here and nothing to lose out, but all to gain. When a driver is at his peak and with everything to gain and nothing to lose, they will do whatever they have to do just to make it to that point, to make it to the final four. With one already locked in, three spots remain. Action Jackson is looking to be one of them. Charles Van Schyke for sure is looking to be one of them. But somebody's got to give on the other side of the field. We've got a who's who drivers ready to bring it to the house and bring it down to the fight here at Fontana. We'll bring him down to the front straightaway to the green flag. Restart zone. It's time to go racing here for the truck series. Oh, that's not the way you start a race, though. Reynolds almost lost it completely into number one track. A little slippery down there for that 94. It opens the gate up for Samuel Harrell to swing in the middle. He takes control there. Charles Van Schaik also taking a bit of control here as he looks to try to take down the gold standard, Aaron Smith. Smith takes the early lead. Jackson going to lay down low for now. Smith really has nothing to prove here. He's already locked in. He's just at this point showing off or having a little bit of fun looking for house money. On board with the Hobbit 24, Cody Sturgill taking it to the extreme outside links here to try to get some speed going, some momentum kind of shifting his way. Kind of keeping it right there with the number 42, Dakota Kramer, as Kramer keeps his only fan machine up and running, up and working. Trying to line him off down through the bottom ledge here, the track here. We go on through corner number four. Still Charles Van Schyke as well, trying to get some momentum built his way around Aaron Action Jackson in, as well as Aaron Smith here. This is something you'll see a lot of throughout the day, as this draft being crucial to not only the path, but the back half as well. Top drivers will know when and where to make their moves and make their marks. Some will decide when they need to go to the outside and when to make the run for it. Looks like Van Schaik is going to tow for it early as Smith stays to the bottom, lines up field and keeps everyone behind him. But Schaik now crossing him over. He's got an opening here. He's going to lead him down to the inside. Smith not going to hold him back. We've got a new leader. A new leader already here as the field right now just getting entangled up and just trying to stay out of trouble at this point. Keeping it close right now. These four drivers not laying an inch off on the track. Aaron Action Jackson kind of crossed up on the bottom. The 43GP.com, number 43, Sammy Horrell up on the top side here with the Silverado Chevrolet camp. Trying to make some moves off here into the distance. Trying to keep everybody right in position and in contention. Nobody is safe for the moment. David Pencil Scott, only the third time we have seen him here on the show. Great to see him back on out. He's been pretty much trying to take on everybody and anyone that gets through his way and into his ends. As you see... The Hobbit, during four, having the uh, famous meme on there saying, you shall not pass. Well, Sergil, I don't think we live in the Hobbit world. I think uh, Scott is looking to make a pass, my friend. You don't, I don't think that's going to hold him back from taking you down there. But he is not letting up at one bit. He'll block him off and keep him under his control. Eighteen, the Red Bull drive it up. Interstate batteries of Miller Smiths right now, looking to try to keep consistency and control here for his interstate batteries. Eighteen, Silverado Chevrolet. He's got the Japan Dub, Pokemon Dub number five, and Nathan Bogart right in front of him as the entire field kind of in a bind here, deciphering when and where is the right time to move and when's the right time to strike. Going to the bottom will tear the tire up a little bit on the right front, whereas staying more towards the uh, middle and the bottom lane will still give you a bit of a runoff, but it gives you more speed. The outside, it doesn't give you as much speed, but what it does is, is it allows you to be a little bit more consistent 
But in terms of not having to worry about tearing up too much equipment down there, pretty interesting though to see how many levels and playing fields these guys are getting from this track right now here at Auto Club. But that's kind of be expected too. Wide making wide openings. It's really designed for this kind of racing and this type and this type of racing is exactly what they're getting out of it and what they're going for. Aaron Action Jackson right now trying to bring the action. He's got a little bit of a jump up on the top side. He's got help coming. The five, Bogart lined him up. Almost gave him a little punch and a push draft there, but he realized how close he was coming to the corner. Knew that was not a good idea. Backs off, gave him the draft, and the momentum shifting to Jackson as Bogart will now move the chains right into the top five and now one for the third. Some great balance back in the front here. Let's take a look at the back of the pack, though. Christoph Hall, the number 98, Home Depot machine. Kind of a scheme, I would usually say, that kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, what I would see old Gioli Logano driving there back in the days. Crazy to think how times have changed. The fast lane, number 83, of Brandon Burkhardt, Richard Crane, the 36 and the 89, of Russell Ottaway back there, kind of lingering around. Ricky Utting and Jeff Ramsdale with problems still. Trying to get up to the field as we're closing in on stage number one. Got it back down around the front straightaway here. Every driver for themselves. Nobody giving an inch. Nobody giving out. for Reynolds right now keeping close tabs close eye on that 43 of Sammy Harrell the GP.com trying to see if maybe there's an opening or a shot to take from underneath or in the back here as he continues to have the problems of dealing with the 18 of Phil Schmitz and the rest of the crew pushing as much as they can to get to him looks like Sturgill actually was able to make sure that Scott was not able to pass so the so the spell works as I say, I don't know. I've actually never seen The Hobbit, so you guys can uh, feel free to criticize me for that little joke. Aaron Smith back on the bottom lane here. And again, this might be the track that kind of evens the playing field out for the start of it. But when they get into pit road ends, I think that's when Smith really is going to start taking more control of this race. These guys need to learn where and when he's going to try to make a move. He's going to try to make a strategy here on him. Strategic plays is what the 70 is all about, and he's willing to test you and your patience as much as anything. Action Jackson's been to pit three lane here already this season, but here on P3 TV, the one thing we've noticed as of late, he struggled to really make some noise in the top half. He's been more in the middle pack and then gets late in the run. He'll get into the top five, just kind of sneak his way in there. Kind of a silent assassin, not living up to the Action Jackson name I gave him a long, long time ago. But it seems today he has learned that lesson. And now he's really got to kick it into overdrive. And he's doing a great job of it right now. As the rest of the field continues to find their leg up and find their positioning when they can. Samuel Harrell, you can see how close he was with Nathan Reynolds. Or Justin Reynolds, excuse me, in the 94. As Charles Van Schaik in the 23. Continues to deal with the pressure up top there. Running him down, down to the back. And Smith swinging him up. Swinging a miss. For Jackson Jackson, Smith going back down the bottom, kind of cross him over like we saw the Indy cars do earlier on. And for good reason, too, because he's rolling up on the final lap of the stage. Jackson needed to hang in there. He's not going to get it this time, though. Aaron, Aaron Smith lays down the hardwood. The gold standard finishes first in stage one. So the gold standard will get a stage win for stage number one. Big victory for him there out of the gate. That's immediately going to make other guys kind of squeamish and squabble, just trying to make sure they can get that speed back and get the momentum kind of kicked underneath them. Now comes addictively the uh, 
the toughest part of this one, which is gonna be strategy here. So ladies and gentlemen, you're probably wondering at home. All right, we've talked about the round of eight. We've only got four drivers, man, has gone. We know one of them's already in. What about the other three? Well, let me give you guys a rundown here. So Aaron Smith, he, no matter what he does here today, it doesn't matter. He's already locked in. He's in the final four. Bud Shear right now is seven points up. Aaron Action Jackson is six points up. Ricky Udding is... Is only one point up. You know who's below him in the fi in the final three legs? It's Charles Van Schaik, Christoph Hall, Levi McCarty, and Justin Reynolds. Those right now are the drivers on the bottom of the barrel. They're on the they are on the cutoff. Utting is only up by one on Schaik. If Charles Van Schaik can find a way to get the speed and continue the momentum around Utting, he's got a great chance to go into the top four and advance into the final round next week. Christoph Hall, though, and Levi McCarty, as well as Justin Reynolds, to say the least here, if they want to make it in, they need a win. That's the only way they will make it in. So for Bud Shearer, Aaron Jackson, really, they're in a comfortable position. But the downside, though, is even though they're in a comfortable position, they still need to be careful on how much they give up and how far they fall back. Because if they go too far back, Shike and Udding can come back and haunt them and take them for a few legs or a few notches here. That could toss them dearly here. Shearer going to get into pit road on his end. Got to be careful here. He's got to get in quickly and got to get out as best he can. And it looks like he will be successful. Smith is already out of pit road here, so he's just going to continue on with his day. Charles Van Schaik gaining maximum traction here. May have gained a few playoff points there from that stage finish. Nathan Bogart, Justin Reynolds, Samuel Harrell, Charles Van Schaik, and Aaron Smith, your top five coming out of pit road. Bud Shearer is still in pit road. I believe he's not going to use his Insta repair up. I believe he's getting some damage cleared up on the truck. That is indeed. You actually see the fender was bent in a bit earlier. He's actually completely took on a hammer to that spoiler. And you're probably wondering, oh, okay, why did he just use an Insta repair? Well, you got to remember something. We only get so many Insta repairs in these races. And sometimes you don't even get any. So you got to really kind of pace yourself can it control your own destiny hold on to the march hold on to the charge and hang on down to it We're going to bring him right around off of turn number four. This time on by stage one in the books. Guess what? Stage two commencing at Auto Club. Another strong start for the gold standard. 
Charles Van Schaik knows he's gonna have to get an early leg on him and catch him quickly before he gets too far ahead. He's aware the draft is gonna be his saving grace. But Smith has already shown, you're forced to watch and you're forced out of it. It's gonna get pretty crazy and pretty wild there. Firing it back around down through turn number four here. Nathan Bogart, the number five, going right down the inside here as the 24, Cody Sturgill, keeps his conditioning up and keeps his speed underneath him. Justin Reynolds, the number eight four, though. He's looking to make things a little bit more difficult. He's got to run. He's got to seam. And he's looking to make this run for it. Reynolds right now must win. Don't matter what you do now, buddy. You need to win this one if you want to go into the final four, sir. He's on the bottom end of the point system today, and he knew going to this race, if this RBS 94 had any hope, any chance, he was going to have to do something he has not done all season long, and that is absolutely take control of this race and dominate. Back to the bottom, here we go. Three wide, deep on the back straightaway. Reynolds trapped in the middle of the sandwich. Samuel Rail up top. Jackson trying to close in the bottom. Racks him into the inside. He's got the runoff. And look at it. Whoa, whoa, hold on. Wait a minute. Where the heck did the Chris, did I need a Christoph Hall come from? Oh, my. Christoph Hall looked like he just got shot out of a cannon. Where did this Home Depot 98 come from? He was hanging around back there. Next thing you know, he was coming through the field. And look at this. Three off deep. Almost to the corner. Shike backs out. Smith's in the middle. Jackson to the lead. And Aaron Action Jackson airs it out on old Aaron Smith. The gold standard throw for Lube. A little smoke coming off of turn number two there. I think that might be the first time we've ever seen that. We did have an update as well from iRacing today. For those that don't know or are not in the know. And they have updated a few things, and it looks like that was one of them. A big little change, and honestly, I like that change. I like Sparks still, but I do like seeing the smoke kind of be more realistic when it happens. Aaron Jackson, your leader. Kristoff Hall trying to get to him. And Kristoff, by the way, yeah, he's in pretty much a must-win as well. Him and Levi McCarty and Justin Reynolds must win for those drivers. Charles Van Schaik desperately trying to just stay ahead of Ricky Utting and make sure he can close off the gap and close off the distance for one last chance to get to the round of four. Jackson, though, your race leader. If he can get the stage points here, this will certainly help his cause. He knows where he's at and he knows what he's doing. As long as he stays focused on the draft and stays away from giving these drivers opportunities here, he'll be okay. Speaking of Ricky Utting here, we're going to go on board here with the number two as he makes a dive down on the inside around the 24, the Hobbit of Cody Sturgill. No room for error, nowhere to go. Ricky Utting moves the chains. More smoke burrowing down off of turn number two there. He's just seen everything kind of kicked up a little bit more and the speech kind of endured even harder as they go. Burkhart kind of hanging back low a little bit right now. Nothing for him to go for, nothing for him to really find after his season had ended earlier on this season. The playoffs really just kind of changed things around for some drivers and it opened the doors up for others. Even the most winningest drivers haven't been able to elude from the fact things can get a bit crazy here. In these playoffs, just ask Smith on that end and sometimes He's had an entire championship season almost destroyed because of these playoffs here and other leagues. Mainly of the Thursday night caliber, but that is kind of the deal you run when you run into the setup this play for this playoff format. I said my piece about it in real life. As for iRacing though, I mean in some ways I don't agree with it, but in other ways it's it's what it is. 
You guys can have your picks on how you feel about it. I've warmed up a little bit more to it, but I still am personally more of the fan of the traditional Winston Cup style format or even the Formula One style where it's like you have the fastest times, the slowest times, and then you have the best times, and you have the best drivers, and you can point them up and tally them up, and that's how you choose a season. Consistency wins above all else. In this playoff bracket, though, you still have to be consistent. If you even want to make it anywhere near into the top half or in those chances, and they certainly are doing it here. Carol Stevens looking for this on YouTube. No luck, but I found it. Oh, well, Carol, I'm sorry to say it. We uh, can't really stream on YouTube and Facebook at the same time. But thank you so much for tuning on in here, and do not worry. This will be up on YouTube if YouTube hasn't already been watching this after the race here. If you hear me call in the comments section as well there, folks, I am talking on the Facebook Live end here. So do not fear. I always do read your YouTube comments if you leave them afterwards. So be sure to subscribe here on our on the YouTube end. Like and follow us up here on Facebook, too, to always get the coverage, get the action if you're new to the channel. It does go a long way. and actually supports us to help get further and bigger as we go. We're trying desperately to get bigger and more better at what we do. Well, Christoph Hall in that Home Depot Pro Chevrolet Silverado 98 made a great charge and a great battle back to catch up to the field. And really, I'm surprised how far everybody behind Hall and Jackson is. This completely flips the entire race on its head in some ways. Smith had waited late, took control, and, stre and strengthened the speed out later on the run. But it seems as though... Aaron Jackson and Christoph Hall have learned something from that. They've learned how to just get ahead quickly and get ahead as fast as they can. With them losing that draft, it certainly helps out. But my ultimate question is, when we get to the final stage, what happens next? That is something we'll have to find out. Right now we're looking at our time list here. Your fastest driver of the bunch here is sitting at a 40.76. The man behind it is Charles Van Schyke in the 23. He's the fastest of the times, the fastest of the drivers, but unfortunately for him, that's not enough to get him further enough ahead of this field as they kind of burrow their way around a little bit with Justin Reynolds getting clipped by the 97. Jeff Ramsdale almost having his entire championship hope go up in flames. Ricky Udding moving the Pepsi Cola machine right into the barge and into the march as well too. Everybody right now absolutely taking control and fighting for this race when they can. Udding knows he needs to start making some ground up. Charles Van Schyke probably not too happy that he's coming back for him. Schyke probably looking at that number, one, number 70 right now thinking if I can get around him I can get some stage points possibly and help my season out. He had a good showing in stage number one. Stage number two, another strong showing. Downside, though, is Utting is literally behind him this time, whereas last time he was a little bit further back in the back. This is not looking good for the 23 in this stage anyway. He's going to need to learn from this and get something figured out. Because in my opinion right now, this is not going to be for the faint of heart, and this will not help out his cause much. Jackson, though, whatever he did in this stage, oh, my word, folks. He took control of this race. Christoph Hall, he's 14 spots up. Take nothing credit for him. He started 16th. He's the hard charger without a doubt. But the, just the near notion and the fact of the matter that he was even able to move into that spot. And then now how far back he is of Jackson. That just shows you what Aaron Action Jackson has now brought to the table. This is the first true moment we've seen him do all day. Speaking of big moments coming up, Reynolds and Unning still going to go at it. These two desperately trying to stay in the playoff contention. Reynolds needs to win this race. Unning needs to just finish better than Schman Scheich at this point in the final stage. If he wants any chance of hope and survival. So you enter into that final round of four. And coming off a of turn number four, Aaron Axon Jackson may have all but just sealed the fates of a couple more. Action Jackson wins stage two.
The driver out of Ashland, Ohio, making a great little coming and a great little show back here as he brings this one into a stage victory. He had such a huge gap and such a huge lead. I would not want to be anybody to leave him that alone or that out that long because if that happens, good luck trying to catch him. Honestly, good luck. As long as he can get the pit strategy down, I don't think he can really lose out here. I think this is a win-win for him. And he knows it, too. I think he's going to use that to a strategy. Danielle Wildman coming on board. She says, let's go, Bogart. Danielle, great to have you on board today. Nathan Bogart, as talked about in that 90, uh, number five, kind of Japanese-styled-up Pokemon scheme. The, 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 the Pikachu on the back of that thing there. And I can't believe I just did that on a broadcast. I'm sorry. Getting into pit road definitely has a little bit of a scrape and bruise on some of these drivers. Some having to really watch it going in and out. Beal going to get him in and out of pit road here. Action Jackson's going to get out first. Christoph Hall's going to go second. Smith will go third. Shike will go fourth. And Reynolds is going to be our fifth man out. Well, race fans, I've been talking all day about this, and I've been talking about it for the end of time. But with this right now, it looks like Jack Aaron Jackson, as long as he stays in that top five, he is all but secured his opportunity, his golden parachute to the final round. As long as he does not get into trouble this stage, he's going to the final four. But who will join him if that is the case? Will it be Bud Shearer or will it be Ricky Utting? Or maybe even Charles Van Schaik on points. Or will we see somebody throw it all on the line like Christoph Hall done just a little bit ago? Or Levi McCarty or even Justin Reynolds. One of these drivers is going to go into the final four with them. And speaking of that, Jackson, he's going back into pit road. I think the 12 wants as much fuel as he can get. I think he is going to strategize above all else. Christoph Hall, not of the same mindset or manufacturer. He's going to stay out. We're going to green next time by. Chris Beffert saying, I'm going to assume the 70 will walk away with this race. Uh, Beffert, I may have agreed with you if it was literally the first stage. But that second stage, he fell back a lot to Aaron Jackson and even Christoph Hall. So, I don't know. One last chance, one last opportunity. Do you go for it or just let it slip? Choice is yours.
Steele currently working their way around. Reynolds right now in a good position to try to do what he needs to do. Smith, though, he doesn't want people to play by the win you're in system. He wants to force everybody to race him. And Reynolds shows him he's not afraid of the gold standard. We've got a new leader, the RBS 94. But Sammy Harrell is not leaving anything on the table either. Here he comes, the inside. Back and forth, back and forth. This is where the fun begins again. Both drivers deadlocked again. The more they battle, though, the more everyone behind gets another chance at it. Charles Van Schaik and Ricky Edding right now looking dead in the eye at each other. They know whoever finishes ahead is going to the play, is going to the final round. Or maybe neither of them could make it in. But Shear is still lingering back there in the ninth spot. And remember, he is one point ahead of Aaron Jackson when we went into this race today. The only way he would get knocked out is if he gets wrecked out and taken completely out of the position. That's the only way he may not be able to make it in. There's a three wide in deep too. Udding and Shike right now. They don't like what they see. They're going to clear it out. Udding gets the advantage. Goes to the top. Shike stays to the bottom. Reynolds deep down to the inside. Trying to get the draft off from Hammerell. Harrell right now not letting them off. They're still three deep in their corner and in the bracket. They're not giving an inch. Ramsdale trapped a little bit, trying to keep some momentum going. The field works their way down the back straightaway. Drafting now becoming the factor that secures or breaks their race. That's from the leaders to the bad pack right now. This is how close this is. They are still 3D, but Shearer seeing opportunity right in front of him. If he can stay in position and stay in contention, he has nothing left to lose off from. Oh, but he gives Ramsdale a little tag in the back. He saves up. They're still good. Still green. 3D. Down the back half again. Smith starting to get shuffled back to the field. I think he just wants to see everyone take out themselves here. Reynolds is literally in the best position he could possibly be. But now he's got Dakota Kramer kind of leaning in. Him and Harrell looking to try to work together to get around the 94. Reynolds dies back down deep again. He's trying to get everybody away from him. He knows what they're trying to do to him. This is an absolute favorite pitch right now. The problem is, though, as Reynolds realizes, even if he burns up that right front it does, and still hangs on, he still has to worry about when does he go into pit road? When does he have to get the fuel to keep this race going? And how well can he get in and out? He needs his team behind him, and he needs these crew behind him. Everybody leaning in and looking on throughout positions. They are just deadlocked and set to get ahead and get into the charge. Aaron Axon Jackson right now, five and a half seconds back. I said as long as he stays out of trouble and stays in the top five, he'd be okay. Where he's at right now, that could cost him. He's got to figure something out, and he needs to get it figured out quickly. If he was going to go for the fuel mileage run and hope for the best, it's a bold strategy and a bold risk, but I don't know if it's enough. Considering something right now, he's 17th right now. Even though he got playoff points, he still has those other playoff points to worry about if the other driver's fish in that top five. And that might be enough to knock him out. Even with the playoff points he gained, it still might not be enough. I'd say for anything, he needs the top five and at the worst top ten to secure it. I think he still has a pretty much good chance to get in. Same with Bud Shearer, so it really leaves that final spot open. And right now, Reynolds is looking to claim the final spot. He is not lifting. He is not lifting at all. This guy is a madman on a mission. Daniel Wildman saying, 
Danielle Wildman saying the uh, number five car looking sharp. Yeah, that's a pretty sweet looking ride out there. Unfortunately for uh, Bogart right now, currently kind of trapped out there in the fail in the pack of the pack here. Everybody else kind of moved ahead of them. Eighteen laps here to go. Here, the number ninety-seven, Dupont of Ramsdale, parking up on the top side as the number twenty-three of Charles Van Schaik moves the chains. Speeds are creeping up. Power is at stake. Race fans, how's about we crank it up? Yeah, a bit of piss ratchet getting put used to work down there on the track here. Drivers are currently fielding in and figuring out the later half of this run. Aaron Smith now is starting to develop the momentum. This is a bad sign if you're Justin Reynolds and you know what's behind you. You know the gold standard will not make this easy. Reynolds, he needs this race. He must win to go to the final four. He is literally on the bottom level of the totem pole. A loss here costs him everything. He is in a must, must win. Drivers that went into pit road. Aaron Jackson, Christoph Hall, Cody Sturgill, Russell Ottaway, Richard Crane, David Pencil Scott, Philip Schmitz, and Sammy Harrell. They have all been into pit road now. Let's take a look at our lap time here right now. Look at this Smith earlier on. Got kind of trapped there for a minute. Now he started to build it back up. Reynolds is starting to lose ground on him. Probably playing close attention to where he's at and what's going on with the fuel mileage. He knows he can't overdo it. He can't underdo it either, though. Has to wait for the right time. But Smith, the more he creeps in there, the more immensely I know it gets to him. And speaking again to him, how about this battle right here? Charles Van Schaik, Ricky Utting, both drivers deadlocked, trying to keep ahead of one another. When they went into this race, they were separated each by one point out. Utting was already in. If Utting finishes that as Schaik, it's game over. It doesn't matter what Schaik does or where Utting finishes from there. If Schaik gets ahead, he needs at least one or two more drivers ahead of Utting to take that spot away. But even then, that still might not be enough. If Justin Reynolds wins it, then Aaron Jackson and Bud Shearer will pretty much join them in that field. It's the win in your end style. That's kind of the knockout position, and that's what you don't want. Reynolds had to blink first over Aaron Smith. Smith's going to be your new leader. Utting and Kramer right now, they are deadlocked between one another. Neither driver wants to give an inch to the other. Aaron Smith knows he had to go into pit road and as soon as he could. Dakota Kramer, Ricky Utting, Brandon Burkhart, and Charles Van Schaik deadlocked on one another trying to hold on. Looking to maximize the speed, maximize their potential. 
This is your battle for the lead. And what an impressive and awesome show this has been, folks. We've had numerous passes, numerous occasions of crossovers, numerous hard racing dat times. This is the thing. Auto Club Speedway certainly will always be remembered for. And speaking of being remembered for, Dustin Reynolds back on the track. And the 94, I think, might have a bit of a problem here. He's going back into pit road. I think he was caught speeding on pit road. His season may have just all but ended right there. He went speeding into pit road the first time around, and his championship hopes have now but all but destroyed. That leaves Bud Shearer, Aaron Jackson, as well as Ricky Hutting and Charles Van Schyke to go at it. Brandon Burkhardt looking to try to play a little spoiler, though. He's currently making things that much more difficult on Nathan Bogart to try to catch him. We're watching on as Shike and Udding go at it. Udding's coming out first. Shike's trying to get the truck out. He's still got left front tires and sides to get on there. He's out. Udding is now on the tr on the charge on the clock. Shike trying to hurry up. That was a bold move by Shike to take the tires, but I don't know if that's going to be enough to keep him in this. Down to the final nine laps left to go. Bogart's in pit row now. Burkhart staying out amongst the entire field. I don't know if he's just feeling a little bit crazy or if he really thinks he can last out this long. He's it. He is literally on the fuel bump and on the fuel gauge trying to keep the truck in one tackle piece. But even he doesn't have enough. He's going to slow it down, get into pit road. Samuel Harrell. In turn number one right now. Going to look to try to catch up to him. Bud Shearer right behind him. If Shearer finishes where he's at right now, he's locked in. If he finishes in this top three, no matter what anyone else does, he's locked into the show now. Jackson far behind where he was earlier. Christoph Hall, same situation. Both guys running into problems on the strategies. Both guys running into problems on staying in control of their own destiny. Burkhardt right now trying to get out of pit road. He's still stuck in there as Samuel Horrell will now take the race lead away with eight laps remaining. A bitter defeat for the 94 RBS Severado in Reynolds' mind right now because he knows what his mistake all boiled down to. His time of need left in a troublesome slate and just could not. Get it finished out when he could. Seven laps remaining. Bedford, when you said earlier you're assuming the 70 was going to win this race, I think you uh, may have been outsmarted there by these guys here, my friend. You didn't quite get that far ahead of the field. Aaron Smith, by the way, is actually in the sixth spot right now, kind of just staying out of trouble. He knows he doesn't really need to get any blood on his hands before the round of four. I don't blame him. I wouldn't. No point in doing it. Stay out of trouble. Let the race go out. Let it play out on its own. Smart thinking. Jeff Ramsdell, the number 97 here, staying right in control and actually pretty much right where Bud Shearer needs him to be. Ricky adding much the same. His strategy may have outsmarted Charles Van Schyke, but Schyke is not giving up. He's trying to get to the number two. If he got any chance, any hope, anything left, for that number two, he needs to use the gold standard Aaron Smith strap, and he needs to use that left horse speed and momentum from the tires to catch him. He is getting closer here. Udding knows he's in trouble. It's 
Smith and Shike are closing in, and they're closing in fast. But is there enough time left? If Smith gets ahead of Utting, then Shike needs to get ahead of Smith. That's going to be the only way they're going to be able to do it. Shike's literally in desperation mode. Here comes the speed. Here comes the power. He's drafted off. He's lined it up. We've got four to go. Utting in trouble. Shike may have made a better move and a better call than Utting did. We don't know. And maybe Utting's playing possum with him and let him catch up to that. Only steal it back. This will be a tough call. He's going to have to make here. Does he try to block? Does he try to defend? He knows the championship is on the line here. He's trying to get into the final four. Herrera right now currently leading this race out. Bud Shearer and Jeff Ramsdell in a comfortable position. Staying out of trouble as Harrell leads the field down. Off a of turn number four now. They'll lean him down in with three laps remaining. Aaron Smith trying to hold it, trying to stick to it. Shike right in with him. If Shike can get around the two and then the 70, it might be enough. Here we go. This is the corner. This is the move. They're going to line the draft up. This is a big move coming for all three of these drivers to the other two out of them. Smith has got blocked off by the two of Utting. Utting is defending. Look at him. He's driving up top. He's trying to keep Smith away. He can't get back down tight enough, though. Smith to the inside. Smith now got him lined up. Shike trying to hold on with two laps to go. Utting right in the mix. Trying to get back to the draft of Smith. He's got to run on Utting. But Utting closes the gap through the door. Cross thread through the middle. Down to the bottom. Utting is dead set to hold it off. He's got a good chance of doing it here if he can just hang on a little longer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your white flag lap this time on by. Harrell right now is in good is in good condition to finish it in victory lane, but the battle is right behind him. Smith top to the bottom. Utting staying down there. Shite going to go on top side. Going to try to draft it off. This is the battle for the championship run to make the final four. Shear knows what's coming behind. Shike's got ahead. If he can get one more position, he's going to possibly do it. Utting desperately trying to get back to him. He's lost it now. Shike desperately trying to get to the 70. They'll lead it down with one more turn. But off a of turn number four to the checkers. Samuel Rell will win it out of club. And at the line, it will be... Shear, Ramsdale, Smith, and Shike at the top five. But is it enough to take down Ricky Utting for the final four? We will have to see. The results will come in in due time here, folks. But nevertheless, it looks like maybe a bit of disappointment on the two. I think maybe he knows he might be down and out. But for the number 43 of Samuel Horrell, victory once more for the GB.com. So Rob Chevrolet, he brings one home. And a climactic sequence and a great drive to the end. And I smell a celebration coming for this GB.com 43 driver. Well, we know for sure that Christoph Hall, Justin Reynolds, and Levi McCarty are done. They are no they will be eliminated from the points. But how do the other drivers fare? We will have to see. Here are your race results though from Auto Club. Samuel Horrell brings it home. Bud Share goes second. Jeff Ramsdale third. Aaron Smith will go fourth. Charles Van Schyke. Top five and takes down Utting 
in the final laps. He'll go six. Schmitz goes seventh. Eight to David Scott. Crane will go ninth. And Brandon Burkhart is going to take home tenth to round out the top ten. My word, race fans. This was fun. This was chaotic. And my gosh, it was a great one to see. Let's listen yeah. in to your finishers now. He joins me as your third place finisher today. And the number 97 DuPont machine returning back again. Jeff Ramsdale takes home another podium. And uh, Ramsdale, my friend, you had to pretty much line everything up and put everything to work. And it looked like some of those guys in the back were trying to catch it there at the end. Yeah, they were coming with uh, with fresh tires there towards the end there. And Aaron's such a better racer than I am with these trucks. But uh, starting last and finishing third, uh, I'll take it here. Yeah, it definitely looked like it was going to get a bit wilder and wilder there. And I know uh, you had a lot on your plate and had a lot on your mind. You've had a podium already here before. But for you and this crew here, I mean, how important was it really just to kind of come back out here and show these guys that for next season in Turan, you are still one of the drivers to watch out for in some of these cases? Yeah, it's good to get these podiums uh, late in the season here, even though I'm not in the playoffs. But to get these podiums is a real confidence booster for uh, next season. It certainly is indeed, but nevertheless, here Ramsdale, I know there's some people you want to thank. Who you got on the list today? Yeah, I got to especially thank my girlfriend. All she does helps me out with all this racing and everything else. Uh, Richard, David, Patrick, uh, Jonathan, all them back of the shop. I do a good job with our team here. Um, this is a good top three and uh, for you putting on this broadcast and Charles for putting on the lead. For sure there, Ramsdale, man. Congratulations on another podium and a third today here at Auto Club. Appreciate it. Thanks. Ramsdale, ladies and gentlemen, going to take it home for a third place finish, but pretty much punching his way into the final four now. Ladies and gentlemen, Bud Shearer is going with the boys to the final four next week. And Shearer, man, you had to really dig in deep and hone this one off on the final stage. Earlier on, it looked like you were struggling. What was going on down with that 93 RBS machine? Saving some tire to start, but I was I think I was racing for like 13th position. The 89 just fenced me coming out of one or out of two. So I mean, kind of got me a little foul. So then I don't know. Six laps later, I ran him tight down the back stretch, and I guess he wanted to run a lane or two off the fence. And we made contact, and he right hooked me in the outside wall under green, no caution. So we fixed that damage, and then when I came back down pit road at the end of the stage. Um, the 18 car turned left like he was pitting, got out of line. I traveled 60 more feet, then I made a hard left, and he was still there. That added a minute and 50 to damage onto it, so we had to finally use some fast repair. So yeah, we had no stages. We could only race that end out, but uh, <laughs> I was hoping Jeff and I could work a little better there. Um, I think if he could have pushed me but two more straightaways, we would have got to Sammy, but I wouldn't have been able to hold off Jeff. He was definitely faster. He was he was being nice staying behind me, pushing me, that's for sure. So big thanks out to the 97 of Ramsdale. He, uh, <laughs> he was definitely a team player when he's not even a teammate. So <laughs> <laughs> Helped you out a little bit, kept you kind of in contention. I know uh, you really needed that and, all, and to keep this thing under control and on charge here, but... For are you in this crew here, I mean, what does it mean to get into this Final Four and then have a chance at the ultimate prize, which is that championship, sir? Well, in trucks, I mean, I hate to say it, but trucks is just for fun, same as Xfinity on Thursdays. I I try to show up as much as I can, but my work interferes. So, I mean, I'm quite shocked we even made the playoffs, let alone Final Four at this point if we did make it. So, yeah, uh shocked i mean i don't think we deserve to be there but we're there um i think justin my teammate deserves to be there a little more but between bad luck i think he missed six races that kind of took him out of it so i can't believe we made it to this round still i would i think i would rather watch him win and me come fifth in the standings and him go to the final four um but yeah i'm shocked we made it i'm terrible at this track I'm terrible at mile and a half so um looking forward to phoenix <laughs> well looking forward to phoenix looking to home to bring home one last little fight so i guess as always man i'll ask you this and you want to thank you for the second place finish i gotta give a big thanks to mr jeff ramsdale right off the hop uh i probably would have finished six probably fell back to six in that last four laps if it wasn't for him so big thanks to him big thanks to rbs justin sean brock bobby 
for everything they do. Big thank you for putting on this broadcast. Three minute. Chuck for putting on the league. And everybody that comes out. What's up with my crap every week? <laughs> but congratulations and welcome to the Final Four, sir. We'll see you then, buddy. Thank you, guy. But sure, ladies and gentlemen, going to bring it home to get himself into the Final Four. But the man that shocks a lot of them out there and takes a little spoiler to a few of them, he wins it. Ladies and gentlemen, Samuel Harrell. And Sammy. Well, oh, my what's friend. What's up, fellas? Uh, <laughs> well, what's up is uh, you uh, showed up late and you showed in for a party, my friend. What about this? How about that? Yeah, man. It was uh, I finally had a strategy work out for me. That's all I got to say. Uh, it was a great race all around. No cautions other than the stages, and I mean, great racing. It. We had to put on a show on the broadcast for sure. You did indeed. I mean, you can go back and watch it for yourself, but there was a lot of great con great shots, great moments in between. Everybody really had a stake in this race or had something to put on. But for you and this team, I mean, and you had to go the distance and kind of travel it out a little bit later on. Were you a bit nervous maybe that one of these guys was going to start to really draft back up and try to make a run for you there at the end? Yeah, yeah. when I – um. I'd made my bed. I said on lap 44, I was going to come in and just take right sides because the left sides really wasn't wearing that bad. But, man, the first five laps out on just right sides, that truck was just wicked loose. So I was having to pedal it, pedal it, and then finally got into a groove. And I seen Rams dueling, uh, sure. But they was, uh, it looked like they was drafting together, working it. And uh, when it got down to two seconds, I got a little worried. But then with two laps left and I had 1.1 seconds ahead, all I had to do was run my line. I knew I'd won that one. I had just the right amount of laps. How about that? Right. Two more and they might have got me. Well, right at, the right, amount of, uh, the right at the right amount of laps is all you need there, Sammy. So, man, I got to ask you, brother, who do you want to win this one? Who do I want to win the championship? Who, who, who do you want to thank for this win today? Uh, man, always my teammates. They make me better, and every driver in this league is top-notch. They make us all better. It's something to say that you can beat Aaron Smith, Aaron Jackson, Bud, Jeff, Charles, my teammates, Kristoff, CJ, Dakota, Maurice, and Russell. It says a lot to be able to beat those guys because they're all good, very talented drivers. Talented drivers, but yet you can put yourself in that marker too, Samuel. Congratulations. What a win into victory lane trip for you today, buddy. Yes, sir. And I just want to thank Charles again for putting on this great league. And anybody out there watching, if you want to join a league that's fun and they put on a show, come on over to Goat Racing and join us. We're fixing to start season two in January. Everybody's welcome to join. And, you know, we'll be joining you, too, soon enough. So we can't wait to see it. But nevertheless, man, congratulations. It's great yeah. to hear from you again. Yes, sir. sir. And, uh, hey, great job, fellas, up in the booth. <laughs> no problem there, buddy. Thanks so much for your time. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Samuel Harrell leaving nothing on the table or on the mic. And what a performance it was, race fans. Go race the Greg. Put on a classic here at All Club, and we can't wait to see what comes next at Phoenix. A championship will be determined to next Tuesday. But for now, as we sign off for today, we say thank you to everybody from here at Auto Club in Fontana, California. We love you guys, and we appreciate you. We'll see you next time.